Besides laying points today, we're also going to examine track beds and see which ones are the best. So, let's see who the winner is. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. In this episode, I'm going to go through laying some uh, track points, a uh, phone track bed and some point motors on the board which I covered last week when I built in the river. But before I do that, what I thought I'd like to show you is why I've, why I've opted for the particular use of Woodland Scenic Foam Track Bed. I've had some questions asking me why, so here's the answer. I think it's worth mentioning that I have a mild obsession on track rumble when trains go around the layer on the, on the boards. And I try to minimise it during its construction. There are layouts out there, and I'm not running them down, you know, other, other channels such as Everard Junction. And um, Richard plays real locomotive um, sounds as he runs his trains around the layout. Um, and to be perfectly honest, when you watch the videos, they're absolutely brilliant. You know, they really are um, top shelf stuff. Myself, I'm a sound loco kind of guy, so I want to make the most of these, you know, the ESU or Zimmo kind of type chips and replicate the sounds myself, well, not myself, you know what I mean, um, in the locos so we can hear what's going on, you know, from the train going around the track rather than playing a soundtrack during uh, the construction of a YouTube video. So that's my kind of thought process. So what have I got here today? I've got my old Dynamis, which I use for kind of um, programming and that kind of stuff away from the layout. Um, it's what I cut my teeth on when I got back into, into Model Rail with DCC. That's the controller. I've got this um, rolling row, which you may have seen before, and some people ask what make it was. It's Zeller, that's Z-I-L-L-E-R. Um, it's a German company, and it's available from Ten Commandments, and it's um, not cheap. There we are. Um, so my rolling road, um, and I've got some, uh, some three millimeter cork, the Woodland Scenics uh, track bed that I'm using and some old Hornby foam track bed. Um, and what I'd like to do is for you to focus in on the sound that this loco makes um, on these various track beds. The class 37 will start up now and go up to speed step 60 of 126. And clearly you can hear the sound transmission that comes straight from the, uh, the rolling road through the hard plastic uh, mounts into the baseboard. Now if I pick it up and put it onto the 3mm foam track bed, uh, the 3mm cork track bed, it's much quieter because obviously the cork is, is blocking the transmission of a great deal of the vibration and sound going down. The only problem with using this is when, of course, you ballast. When you put your track down and ballast and then ballast it with a hard type B PVA glue, you're back to exactly the same problems you were as when you had it straight onto the bare baseboard. The sound will go straight through. If I now put it onto the old Hornby uh, foam track bed that has a limited life of around about 10 years, it's much quieter again. The only problem with using this foam track bed is it doesn't look realistic and as I mentioned after around about 10 years it, it disintegrates into kind of dust it gets very fragile and just breaks up which then takes me back to this one here which is the Woodland Scenics foam track bed. And the sounds very similar to that of the Hornby Except when you put your track and ballast this one, you need a ballast that, that stops, sorry, you need a glue for the ballast that stops the transmission of sound. And I've come across a couple of rubberized type glues. So hopefully when these things go trundling around my track, you won't hear the rumble, but what you'll hear is the sound of the loco with the sound chips. A 
and that's why I find um, the, the control of the sound coming from your locos and from all your rolling stock because every coach, every wagon that trundles around your track will create noise. And of course the noise I really want is the steel wheels on the steel track and also the sound from the, uh, from the sound chips of the locos and that's what's driving my um, obsession to too strong a word but, um, but that's what, what I'm trying to achieve. It's also worth mentioning that in the literature that you get from uh, Woodland Scenics regarding this stuff is they, they expect you to have a lifelong expectancy. It will not dry out and it will not become fragile. What you see now is what you should, it should always look like. This stuff should, you know, kind of outlive most of us really. So that's uh, why I've lent on it. And um, just for the record, no one's buying this for me. Everything I have here, I've bought myself. I mean, don't, please don't imagine that Woodland Scenics are sponsoring me to promote their stuff. That truly isn't the case. But having said that, I do get help from both donors and patrons, for which I'm very grateful. Our starting point is these four tracks in the station area, all laid on the foam. And as we come up towards the turn, we've also got right at the top of this picture, the hidden DMU line that will come around from the top board. And if we follow those four foam tracks around, we end up on the board that I constructed the river in last week. And to get those four tracks, I need to come down through uh, two points, one of which is a curved point and the other is a medium radius straight. And then those four points, uh, those four tracks then become two. And then to enable us to split into the fiddle yard and to the industrial board that will come next, we also need to go back to four tracks. And to that end, I've got two medium radius left-hand points and a diamond crossing. So the bottom two tracks will then go into the industrial unit and the top two tracks, along with that track right at the very top, will go into the fiddle yard. So where do you start? You start with the points. You get the points in the right positions, get those sorted out, make sure there's nothing underneath. Once you've confirmed that that's exactly where you need them, you can then put the rest of the track in so it actually blends in and meets up with the next board. And then similarly, when you move on to the next board, you will install the next bit of track to make it run around. So getting the points in the right place is the crucial thing. So always go for the points first. You can always use flexi track and get, get the track to run with the right profiles of where you want it to go and put on your super elevation and all that kind of stuff but the points are the most important thing, so let's get those in first. I have an advantage here that I fit my, my boards once I've don, done, don, once I've done a lot of the construction work. So I've got the advantage now that I can take this board out, pop it on a set of trestles, and then work on it away from the wall. So here we are with the points in their respective places, and all seems well. The thing to remember now is to measure the distance from one particular rail to the back edge so that all of them um, will remain parallel and you won't get any kind of diverging rails as it runs across the board. With my, <laughs> my youngest daughter's Barbie pencil, um, I'm going to make sure that this rail here is 10 centimetres or kind of four inches in old money from the edge of this board. Then using a six foot weigh gauge, the rail dimensions should be five centimetres apart. So therefore, this rail on the front point should be 15 centimetres. Now having marked out the ends of where the points are on the board for both sets of points, I can now remove these and lay the first piece of Woodland Scenics track bed and then move on from there. So I have my first piece of uh, track bed and I'm going to glue it down with copy decks. Um, but sadly the, the brush on the copy decks isn't long enough to get to the bottom of the pot. Whoa, easy tiger. So I'll just decant some of it into here and <clears throat> pop it on the back of the 
track bed. So now it's a case of turning it over and trying to make sure that we end up in the right area for the 10 millimetres. So it needs to overlap somewhat. So it must be around here. So it's a case of popping it on, getting a point in the point 10 millimeters uh, 10 centimeters or a little bit out just a case of getting the track in the center of the track bed should be fine. Now the next piece the track will need to be at 15 centimeters. Yes, a small gap in the centre of around about five millimetres will give me the right distance um, for these to be apart. So I shall just glue this one up. And that should be dry in no time at all. So there's the second piece. It's now the following day and I've modified uh, all the points and crossings so that each one has um, a green cable attached to the frog and also uh, the power to the points which come in on these red and black cables. And if you've watched any of my previous videos you will probably be aware that I always wire black to the back. So the black cables run on this, on the, this uh, rail, where obviously the front rails are on the red. That's the way I always power them. The modifications on these, I'm sure you're aware if you are an electrofrog uh, point user, um, and all we simply do is cut through the wires that connect on these uh, rails here, and solder across these two rails, the, uh, the stock rail and the switch rail. Um, and then instead of using a different feed, all I then do is drop those to the inside so they'll drop down onto the layout with, uh, without too much camouflage required. I've also removed the spring from the point because I use uh, slow action point motors. Um, I use tortoises and I'm sure the same is the same with cobalts. But if you're a solenoid point user, then you need to leave the spring in. I've also cut another little bit of the, the foam underlay to go into this gap here where the points come across. So what to do first? Well, I need to drill a couple of holes to get these cables through to the other side of the board. So holding the point in position then, all I do is mark through onto the underlay where I need to drill these holes. And you'll be shocked to know of my latest investment. I 
I could no longer take the criticism of not having a little vacuum cleaner. So, next thing to do is thread those cables through those holes. And now we need to align uh, the switch blades so we can drill the hole straight through there for the point um, arm to come back up so that the wire is in the right place. And the way I do it to make sure that the hole is drilled in the right place, I make sure that the, the point is absolutely in the right place, then I put the switch blades in the middle and then I get a small pin, um, a track pin, with the head cut off and I tap it into the timber and then pull the point out of the way. And for my point motors, I need a 10 mil hole. Now I need to glue this point in position before I move on to um, the next point, which is the diamond crossing. Now the glues I've been using for this project are copy decks and also the foam tack glue from Woodland Scenics. Um, the reason I use these is they're actually a kind of a rubber based glue, so the transmission of sound is minimised. And I tend to use the copy decks for gluing down the uh, track bed and I use the foam tack glue to glue the, uh, the points and drack onto the foam bed itself. Now in gluing these in, obviously the, it's, it's actually fundamental that it's in the right place otherwise your point motor is not going to line up, but also keep the glue away from this area here. The last thing you want to do is glue down the switch blade. And then once it's in place and you're dead sure and you can see through the hole of the switchblade that's all fine, lovely. Once it's there all you need to do now is put a bit of weight on it and then wait for the glue to go off. Okay. I think it's worth mentioning at this point, um, the reason why I always glue them is because I don't want to use pins. Because if you use pins, you'll come back to the transmission of sound coming from the point straight through your, lo your lovely cork or foam track bed into the board and you're going to get that rumble sound. So by not using um, pins and just using rubberized glues, then you don't get the transmission of sound. If of course you decide to use um, cork track bed rather than this Woodland Scenics track bed that I've used, when you glue it down, don't make the mistake that I did and then plonk nice books over it to keep it down whilst it dries because what I found was the glue came through the, uh, the, foam, uh, the cork track bed into the books and it was, a, it was awful, it was, a, it was a hell of a mess. Um, but you could, you can put the, uh, the, the, the cork track bed down with, you know, glue it down, put some polythene poly bags over the top of it and then put your weights on. Um, it will take longer to dry uh, because the air can't get to it but after a, you know overnight just take the books off, pull the polythene away and then your track bed will um, finish off drying uh, you know onto the baseboard. But I did, um, I came close to ruining some books and god did I get a slating on this channel. 
about an hour has gone by now and this point is pretty much there it's just uh, you can see some of the white of the glue still uh, yet to go off but it's in and it's stuck and it's stuck well so we now move on to this diamond crossing um, please don't be confused by the amount of insulated rail joiners on here it's because there are two different power districts coming through um, and I wish to keep them isolated from each other um, and also I'm into block detection so I need to um, be very careful on what power goes in, into which rail hence um, the all the insulated rail joiners um, and underneath it's, it's normal routine which is black to the back and red to the front and these will go into two different power strip districts because one will be on the going into the um, industrial line power district whereas this one will be on the inner power district so now it's a case of drilling a couple of holes as usual and uh, then gluing this one into place and then we can go straight on to the next one there so there's my that's that in the right place so I need my holes there and there It's always best to keep the uh, glue away from the cables in case you have to lift it because you'll get yourself into all sorts of problems otherwise. Okay, drop my piece into there. Drop a glue under there. Okay, 15 millimetres. And we're good. It didn't look that far out, but until you put a ruler on it, and then you can realise that uh, it was a fair way out. And of course this track bed has got a line on the top which also helps you to um, align, the, uh, align the tracks. A little bit of a pickle trying to get those insulated rail joiners in. I will just check that they are all in. Yes they are. And we're good to go. So it's a case of once more weighting this one down and then we'll crack on with that one almost immediately. Same routine as on the first point, so it's just a case of threading the cables down and through, except this time we need to slide the point into these fish plates. Make sure the cables come down okay. And then make sure our distance is right. Uh, 15 millimeters and then once more with the um, the pin with the blade central and the switch blades in the in the middle and 
pop the pin in. A little bit of local vibration. And there we need our 10 millimeter hole. Quick alignment check. And then does it look right through the hole where I drilled? It's hard to see. Yes. Okay. Right, just weight this one down. And we'll be done. So again, it's just a matter of time now, waiting for the glue to dry, and we should be good. Okay, these are uh, have now nicely stuck down, and I've also inserted both of these points. They're not glued down, but all the wires are through, and the um, the holes are drilled for the point actuating uh, arm to come through. One thing I failed to mention earlier was the the frogs must have insulated rail joiners on as well because you're electro frog um, points so all of these must have um, insulated rail joiners and I know I have extra rail joiners on just because of block detection but that's my my thing. Right, so now we need to insert a piece of track in here and we need to insert this piece of track first because if both of these were glued down I can't slide back the plastic rail joiners. You can always slide back the metal ones but you can't do it with the plastic ones so you need to secure the piece of track first before um, you glue this one down. So it's a case of getting the piece of track right, sizing it up, uh, cutting it, fitting it in and then gluing this one and that one down at the same time. So what we need to do now is offer this piece of track up. <laughs> That's unusual, it actually went in in front of the camera. And then looking at the, uh, the piece of track underneath is to try to figure out where to cut the track. So it's kind of there and there and as you regulars will know with my goggles my weapon of choice is obviously a Dremel with a cutting disc I get asked a lot about this uh, cutting disc. Well, there's a new one. It's available at £6.99, or it was when I bought this one, from squirestools.com. Um, and it's 0.7 of a millimetre thick. And I will always use these rather than those wretched carbon ones, which just seem to shatter every time I go to use it. So how did we get on with our measuring? And that's not bad. I just need to clean up these ends. 
Well, that's the ends cleaned up, so let's try to see if it fits. It's one of my pet hates, threading fish plates in front of the camera. Pliers. Okay, we're good to go. So I just need to do the same for another piece here, put a set of droppers on both rails and then uh, glue one pair down at a time, obviously. Well, yet again, it's the following day and all the glue's gone off and the points are all in the right place. They all seem to line up well. Um, so without patting myself on the back too hard, it seems to have worked out okay. There are some gaps here where um, I remove sleepers and by simply cutting um, the webbing and the chairs off, you can just simply poke the odd sleeper into the gap. And at this stage, really, they don't even need gluing down because the friction from the track bed under underneath will keep them in the right place. I mean, you can always do this when you ballast but um, it just saves one job later on and it kind of it looks more sort of aesthetically pleasing um, with them all in the right place so there we are it looks pretty good um, but where do we go from here well I've got a little bit of wiring to do as you can imagine because these are the cables from underneath <laughs> and this is just the track and points cables I've obviously got to do one two three four uh, point motors and their control cables so um, the job is not really halfway there yet so with the board back in position you get a better idea of what's gone on I've also installed the DMU line that runs behind those two lines that we did earlier and that's using simple set track because it's as straight as a die and it will run straight along into the new section and now you can see the two points in the diamond crossing and also further on the other two points and as you can see they're where they'll join up to the next board and it was fundamental getting these in first so that you can actually get the lines to run smoothly into the next section but before I can permanently fix this board to this one, of course, there's something fundamentally missing, which is the back scene. So I've got to get another piece of back scene, well, two, three metre lengths, I think, is a back scene, um, and then run those along this far wall um, and then get that in position first before I can progress with fitting this permanently to there. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to reach the back scene and get it across. Once that's done and the points uh, the point motors are installed and all that cabling and all tested I can then permanently stick this board onto this one um, and then I can run trains because that board is powered right through to the other end of those points so we're kind of good to go there from then on um, once this is done I can then move on to the industrial side and the fiddle yard of the, the new kind of look Chadwick which will be a um, a marvellous opportunity to take this forward. Now before I wrap up I wanted to talk about cable size because uh, during this video and on that board I've only used something called 702 which is seven strands of 0.02 millimetre cable and those seven strands bind together and I give you, a, I'm pretty sure it's a 1.2 amp um, power rating. If, of course, this board was sort of 10 foot away from that um, distribution, distribution area just there, then I would need a, a larger cable size. Um, now, rather than just guess, if you go to railwayscenics.com and you'll find um, like a cable chart there and all the data you need on the various cable sizes all laid out there in a quite straightforward format. So if you have any um, issues and it also gives a, um, uh, an American wire gauge, an AWG sort of feed across table. So please go there rather than ask me which cable size you should use on whichever run. 
Um, if it's a short run, you don't get a big voltage drop, and if it's a long run, then you clearly will. Um, and the last thing you want to do is have your locomotive at the other end of the layout sort of struggling because it hasn't got enough power. Um, I've had some, <laughs> uh, not complaints, some suggestions. Because of the situation the country's in at the moment with this lockdown, people have been binge watching the channel. <laughs> and it's nice weather outside as well. Why would you do that? Um, so they've asked me to number every video. So I have from the beginning, from one right through to this one, which will be 91. So at least then you'll have a, a th <laughs> if you, if you've nothing better to do with your life than to watch this channel, then you can, but um, please don't self harm. Don't keep any sharp implements with you when you watch so much of this. Um, there we go. I've also got a new email address. So rather than use my existing ones, if I could ask you to use Chadwick Model Railway at gmail.com is an email address I've just put out there and that should be receiving emails. Um, I do like to help people out with problems, but I am getting a lot of emails now. So, um, you know, by all means, drop me a line and say thanks. But if you're coming to me with real big problems, please go online onto other YouTube channels and try to find your the answers be before you come to me because I barely got time to shoot these videos. This takes me Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday morning. I upload it Wednesday afternoon um, and I can't spend the rest of the week answering emails as much as I'd love to. Um, and finally, a big thank you to the Facebook channels. I normally put these, my links up onto Facebook on a Sunday or a Monday, um, but I am indebted to the people who run these Facebook channels for me allowing me to do so. And I am very grateful. So thank you very much for that. Anything else? No. Right. So that kind of wraps it up. And as usual, I would like to thank the people who donate and my patrons. Please don't forget to subscribe because it is free and there should be a video here and here. Should you not decide to go out in the beautiful sunshine? Thanks a lot. Take care. See you next week. Bye bye.